policies. And some people I may not be, but I don't understand that. That's the reason I'm questioning you about it. So I regard the Federal Reserve as one of the most transparent central banks in the, in the world. I, we that's a statement. What, what do you fear? Shamai, welcome. That was the Bitcoin guy from 2017. I don't know if you remember that moment, but we kind of very much needed him at that time. Uh, everything felt pretty like price oriented because the price of Bitcoin was going up, so everyone was excited about that. And then it kind of dropped a bit and everyone felt down. And then we had the big scaling issue. Uh, and he kind of like reminded everyone why, why we're here, you know, that kind of trolliness which Bitcoin inherently has. So I thought it'd be cool to have a project with that in. Um, so we're going to make a little access point using our ESP32, which we've used in all the other projects. Um, uh, and that access point is going to be called Buy Bitcoin. So anyone who checks the Wi-Fi, they'll see Buy Bitcoin. Um, uh, and then if they connect to it, it's going to throw up a captive portal. Um, uh, and it's just going to have the uh, a web page of the Cypherpunk Manifesto on. So I thought it was pretty cool. We're then going to extend that. Um, and I'm going to try and, because there's a big institute nearby, uh, and like universities and um, uh, council offices and all those sorts of places, they generally, the IT guys, just buy the cheapest keyboards and mice they can find because obviously they get smashed and um, they cost a lot to replace. Uh, so I went and bought one of the keyboards which they have, um, which is like £4, pounds, um, and I'm going to try and get this bad boy and try and um, uh, embed it into the keyboard. So it's running off the power of the keyboard, which means that when the keyboard's plugged in, that keyboard will be broadcasting this access point saying buy Bitcoin in this big computer suite. And then if anyone's stupid enough to click on it, the captive portal will come up with the Cypher Manifesto, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it'll work, but we're going to give it a go. Uh, you could obviously then just use that on its own without you know, the, the keyboard part, but I just want to show that you can take this and you can embed it into other devices, um, uh, uh, retrofit it into other, other devices, cheap devices. Uh, we're going to use this this main sort of dev kit board uh, to, to test our code. Um, uh, so you've, the actual microcontroller itself is this thing here, this big silver thing, and then the rest of it is kind of like um, uh, resistors and capacitors and things and um, some nice easily access accessible like GPIOs on the back. Um, and that's just so you can kind of like easily develop on it. Uh, but the actual chip itself is just you know that big so it's tiny enough for me to be able to embed into the keyboard obviously i'm going to have to pack in a couple of resistors and things for for safety so we don't overcharge it um uh but yeah this little bad boy can can you know make a, a an access point um, with a, a little web server and then deliver that little web page for us so that's pretty cool um uh yeah so the same hardware as we've used before um some of you will probably already have this thing uh if you do want to start developing on these little tiny microcontrollers on their own without the, the, the development uh, board built in, um, uh, they're a little bit cheaper, so that was like $2, um, whereas this one's about sort of like 3 or $4. Uh, you will need um, some sort of module to uh, plug the, the, if I just do that now, to plug the ESP32 microcontroller into, and then this module itself just acts like the the, the, the dev part uh, board part of this, um, so we can plug a USB in and then you know flash our code onto it. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to be doing that. Um, as always, the uh, all the code for our project is on, um, on 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 my GitHub, which is ArcBTC. It's under Buy Bitcoin. Um, I'll put more in the the README file here. Um, I'll put this video in there as well, um, which should make it easy. Uh, the, the code itself is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I would. Um, that's the the sort of just the the, the main code to to make the um, the web server and the access point. And then we've got a separate file here, which is the index.h, and that just has the Cypher manifesto in as a HTML, uh, pretty much, which is sort of locked up in a um, a SHA array called main page. Um, which we call in the other file. Uh, as with all this stuff, I would highly recommend if you've bought the hardware, going back and um, completing this tutorial here, the first tutorial, because this helps explain the hardware a little bit more. And then if you want to, you can buy some other little modules. It's all very cheap, this stuff. You can buy some of the little modules and learn how to do uh, 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 some of these, complete some of these other projects. Um, in the last tutorial I did, I was speaking to Adam about the Splooney. The Splooney is an ESP32 which 
um, connects because all of these projects here they use the the wonderful service of open node because it's nice and easy and straightforward for 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 beginners and for users who want sort of no has that don't want the hassle of setting up their own node but obviously if you do want that um, financial self sovereignty uh, Adam here has got a really cool project um, called the Splooney which is using the same hardware um, same technology to connect directly to uh, his own node um, using the Macaroon so that's pretty cool. Uh, Adam did say that when he's developing, he uses um, uh, the the IDE platform IO, whereas I use the Arduino IDE, which is um, uh, specifically built for for Arduino. But I know it's a bit noob to use that, so I, I thought we'd give it a go of using the the platform IO um, IDE. The IDE itself uh, uh, comes as a sort of plugin. Um, for me, I use I'm on Linux, so I'm using Atom. Uh, but for some of you. Windows users, maybe you're using uh, Visual, uh, Visual Studio. I think it's uh, also a, a plugin for that, so it should be pretty easy to get hold of. If you Google like Platform IO uh, Atom or Platform IO VS Code, th there's plenty of tutorials on how to install it. So once you've installed the plugin itself, it, it pops up in, in, in Atom, um, and it's fairly straightforward. You make a new project. Um, I'm gonna call the project uh, by, oh, buddy, <laughs> by, uh, by bits, I'll give a double S because I've already done a test project with a single S. Um, ESP32, and then we're using this dev kit version one, which is like the basic dev kit from Expressive. Um, yeah, Arduino, blah, 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 finish. Uh, that'll then generate a project file for us. Ba -bum, there we go. And here's the project file. Um, this is the, the sort of main file here, which is, you know, if you've programmed on this Arduino stuff before, you have the setup and then the, the loop function. Um, the easiest thing to do, which we're going to do, is we're just going to copy and paste the code from the GitHub. So we're going to go to the main here. Um, and there's only, it's a simple project. It's using a couple of the, the core ESP32 libraries. Um, uh, so, you know, they're vettable if, you, if you're, you know, making an IoT device, which has value being exchanged over it. So um, if you express if uh, ESP32, if you go to their GitHub, here we go. Um, the um, code is all open source, and you can you can go through and look at the libraries which we're going to be using, and you know you can vet them if you want to, um, which is good. Uh, so so yeah, so we copy that, paste it in there. If I quickly talk you through what we're doing, we're just calling a couple of libraries here from the ESP32 core, and that's just to um, make a Wi-Fi client, sorry, a Wi-Fi server, um, uh, a web server even, for people to be able to connect to. Uh, we're also making the access point, um, and we want that captive portal, so we're using DNS server to allow us to do that. Our access point is called by Bitcoin, but you could call it whatever you want to call it here. Um, uh, once it's begun, it, uh, it goes into the loop, it loops around it says is there a client you know is there a client if there is a client it does this stuff here it delivers our html file um so our uh html file here is locked up so it's response html there that string if you can see that that's the string which gets printed down here that string is made from the main page char array a main page char array is ba -ba -ba this SHA in this in index.h here. So we're going to copy that. It's pretty straightforward. And then you can obviously edit that if you wanted to and put something else in there. Um, make a new file. We're going to call it index.h. Paste that in there. Now I'm at the bottom of the Cypher manifesto here, I've got for more information uh, in a nice header tag. For more information uh, on Bitcoin specifically, connect to the internet and go here. And then I, I've got the um, the LOP resources, which are the best Bitcoin resources, by the way, um, if you're a noob. Um, so I'll save those two. Uh, and then it's just a case of flashing it onto our ESP32. I'm not quite sure why that blue light's on there. I think there's probably another project running on there. Just turning that blue light on. Maybe one of the mesh network things I was playing with, which is really very, very, very cool. Oh, God, that's nice. Okay. Then we're going to um, click on this thing here to upload it onto our um, ESP32. You'll need to press the little um, EM button on the ESP32 
ESP32 once it's compiled. There we are, so now we're ready to press the little A button, press the little A button, hold it down. Oh, well maybe it's the boot button, I was getting too muddled up. Yeah, there's a boot button, there we are. Um, compresses it, we cross our fingers. Cool, there we are, that seemed to work pretty well. Right, so we can see here that the ESP32 is running from this little LiPo battery. So now we've just got to test and make sure that um, it is actually running the access point. So if I connect to, try not to dox myself. Oof, so all the WhatsApp messages there running through. Um, if I connect to here, ah, oh, there we are. See, there's one called Buy Bitcoin. Click on Buy Bitcoin. Connect. Sign into Network Buy Bitcoin. I click on there. Just once, opening Chrome, please. And then hopefully. Boom, look at that. Cypher Manifesto. Ace. Fantastic. And then at the bottom, yep. Yeah, there's a little link there, so if someone wants to log out and then log back in, um, sorry, log into a, a Wi-Fi, uh, an access point with internet or whatever, then um, then they can connect and, and go to the Jason Jameson Lops um, uh, webpage there. So that's pretty cool. So that totally works. So the next stage, I guess, is to test to see if we can flash the code onto just onto this little thing here, and then we'll need to solder a couple of pins on there so we can actually plug the LiPo battery in, or in our case. Uh, solder it into our keyboard. Um, so that's that's the next step which we're going to do. So if I, um, ooh, this is a little bit annoying because my phone's about to die, but there we are. If I plug that in there, that's my phone dying. Okay. And then if I Flash the code onto that. Now I think I can just use the same board which I was using, which is the dev kit one. I'll press the little program button on the module. There we go. Cool. Compressing it. Boom. Nice. Right. Let's get back here. Okay, it's pretty good, isn't it? Totally working. Um, so yeah, I'll check to see if that's uh, working. I'll check on my laptop here actually, but I, I won't, so I don't dox myself with Wi-Fi. I'll just check on without you watching. Yeah, it's there by Bitcoin worked. It uploaded, it flashed onto there. That's fantastic. So it's just a case of I'll turn him off. I'll pop him out. So now, on this little tiny ESP32 microcontroller without all the you know dev kit soldered on we need to I wish we would just focus in on the bit I wanted to focus in on I don't know how you would do that um, maybe if I just put it really close against the camera it will figure it out no ah there we are almost there you are can you see there there's some names on those pins um, there's a GND and a, a 3 volt pin there in my finger that's where we've got to solder on some pins We've also got to solder a, a little resistor onto that EN pin because when that's receiving a high, um, that's when it knows, uh, that's when it's like normal ESP32 mode and it will just run. Um, I suppose I can plug my phone in here just to give it a bit of charge. Right, so the next stage, I guess, is to find my screwdriver, which is there, and then uh, unplug this bad boy in it. Unplug this keyboard. Uh, sorry, unscrew this keyboard. So this is the bit where, in the editing now, I'll fast forward this bit. Right. So if you haven't got a multimeter, then get a multimeter for this sort of stuff. Um, It makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to have to plug him in and then test. I'm 
many volts we've got coming through. What? I go to 20 volts. We've plugged our keyboard in. There we are. So I can see there, on these two here, we're getting five volts in. Which one's positive, which one's negative? I think the blue one's probably positive. Yeah, there we are. So the blue one's positive, the white one's negative, and we're getting five volts coming through. I'm not sure if you can make this out, um, but I gave up just trying to uh, power the SP32 just directly using uh, resistors connected to the five volt. I just couldn't get the voltage, didn't like it. Um, so I kind of cheated and I've used this, um, uh, I had one of these, a couple of these CP2102 uh, boards lying around. They're literally about 90 cents. Um, I've got one up on the computer for 90 cents, which I'll show you, well, in fact, I might as well show you now. Um, there we are. Uh, yeah, so uh, they're, you know, super duper cheap. Um, um, I, I, I bought a whole bunch of them in the past. So you can wire this directly to that uh, ESP32 microcontroller, the, the, you know, the single one which we're using without the, the being connected to the dev board. And then using that little module, then you can connect it to the computer and you can flash your code using that little module. Um, so I suppose it may have been easier just to solder it all up and wire it all together and, and, and flash it that way in the first place, but there we are. Um, uh, so I've used that um, and I've, uh, I've powered that using the 5 volt from the keyboard and then there's a 3 volt um, output then which is just going to the uh, ESP32. I've had to put a little resistor in there, I don't know if you can see it, um, and that resistor um, is a it's 10k resistor coming from the 3 volt going to the EN pin um, and the basically the EN pin is like the on pin for the SP32, if it's got a high then the SP32 will be on and it will run your program. So um, when you're dealing with just the the ESP32 microcontroller without the dev board attached, uh, you need to manually like connect a, a, a resistor from, you know, uh, sending a high to the EN. Uh, and then that just goes out to the ground onto the actual uh, little uh, CP2102 board. Um, now this is me trying to squeeze this uh, project into this keyboard. Uh, the By far the easiest thing to do uh, with this project is to just have a regular normal standard um, uh, ESP32 like this one, uh, flash it like we did at the very beginning and then um, uh, I don't know, plug it into some computer somewhere, stash it, plug it into some computer somewhere and it'll just be broadcasting that by Bitcoin uh, access point or you could plug a battery into it, put it in your pocket, wander around and you are an access point, a by Bitcoin access point which is a pretty cool idea. We'll just check now, see if the keyboard works. Uh, yeah, this is just a uh, quick. Yep, it's still a, a fully functional keyboard. Pretty cool. Um, uh, and let me check on my phone now, see if the buy Bitcoin access points there. Hey, okay. don't know if you can see that. It says buy Bitcoin there. Nice. That's being broadcast from the keyboard. Click connect. And the little thing should pop up. There we are, sign in. Open it with Chrome. And then. There it is, the Cypherpunk Manifesto. That's pretty cool. I had some like troubles um, getting uh, on the. Uh, the captive portal on the laptop. I don't really know why, but it seems to work fine on the phone, and I can't be asked working out why it's not working so well on the laptop. I think it might be a Linux thing anyway. So our keyboard we have here now is broadcasting our, our Wi-Fi access point for people to, uh, which is called Buy Bitcoin, uh, for people to log into. And if they, if they, well, not log into, but if they click on it, then it'll launch the Cypher Manifesto, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to drop that off at that local establishment I told you about before. I do recommend not doing a similar thing because I don't know on the legalities of it. Uh, also, be super careful when you're like uh, experimenting with electronics, then plugging those electronics into your laptop because you could easily like burn out USB ports and things. So be careful there. Probably the best thing to do if you wanted to 
do this project is just use regular normal SP32 dev kit, um, upload the code onto it, plug a little battery into it, walk around, then you are the access point. You know, everywhere you go, there'll be an access point saying buy Bitcoin and uh, with the Cypher Manifesto on. Or you could stash it somewhere and plug it into some computer somewhere and um, uh, in some office or whatever. Um, uh, but yeah, if you want to get extreme and start like modding bits of hardware, then cool, but just be careful and uh, you know, I take no responsibility for any broken electronics. Um, so yes, that was fun. Um, I'll see you next time. Some cool tutorials coming up and uh, cheers for watching. Bye.